affecting water demand over the past uh, uh, 10 years or so, from 2006 to 2015. Um, and what we're trying to drill down and quantify what exactly, uh, what kind of numerical effects these factors had on water demand. Um, of course, we want to uh, look at the effect of media coverage um, on this uh, on water demand during this period, given that this drought was so historic and there's a lot of uh, media coverage about it. Um, and previous academic literature suggests that that was a relevant factor. Um, so we're looking into that for Sonoma County as well. Um, once again, this is in the context of single-family residence uh, water demand, um, and we're curious about, you know, for any regression model, any statistical analysis, we want to evaluate the predictive value of these analyses as well. And so we're curious about, you know, how did these, how did this drought, how did these factors change demand uh, during the drought period, and how might it change behavior going forward? And lastly, uh, the Sonoma County uh, Water Agency actually formed a partnership in response to the drought with Marin County, um, which we might all be familiar with here in the Bay Area. Um, and we're curious to be able to drill in on the numerical effect of their conservation budget spending. Um, what, how did their efforts translate into water demand changes in the service area? Um, so for today, we're just going to run you through a little bit of the background information on the area. What does the area look like? What's kind of demographic makeup, the climate uh, like? Um, we'll run through the methodology, how we collected the data, how we ran our regressions. Um, and lastly, through our findings, both qualitative and quantitative, um, and the, which leads us to our recommendations in the end. Okay, so to start with some background, um, first, this, the Sonoma County Water Agency provides water and services to, in, to 10 different cities and special districts in both Sonoma and Marin counties, which is to about 600,000 residents. And um, all of the water comes from local sources, which is something unique about the agency and not very common among water agencies. And these three water sources are the Russian River, Lake Sonoma, and Lake Mendocino. Um, additionally, Sonoma County Water Agency is a leader in conservation efforts, and that is why in 2010 they started the Sonoma Marin Saving Water Partnership. So this partnership was created as a response to the severity of the effects of the California drought, specifically in Sonoma County Water Agency's service region. And it comprises 11 different water utilities in both Sonoma and Marin counties. Um, its purpose is to identify and recommend programs uh, or projects to maximize both the cost effectiveness and the efficiency of water demand in the region. And it comprises different programs and education and outreach campaigns in order to achieve these goals. Um, so to give a little bit of context of the timeline that we're studying, 2006 is our start year for our analysis, um, which is before both the recession and the drought occurred, so we can get some kind of context of what it looked like pre-recession, pre-drought. Um, in 2008 is when the recession began and a small local drought just in Sonoma County began. And in 2009, this local drought in Sonoma County ended. In 2010, the Sonoma Marin Saving Water Partnership began. And in 2011, um, the recession ended and the overall California drought officially began. But in 2013, um, Sonoma Marin, um, the Saving Water Partnership, began um, to um, increase its conservation efforts and to get more serious about the effects of the drought. Of the drought. And in 2014 is when Governor Brown um, declared the second, step, second drought state of emergency, but this is the first one that really um, brought media attention and heightened um, the public awareness and knowledge of the severity of the drought. In uh, 2015, Governor Brown additionally ordered some mandatory state water restrictions, which led the county state board to impose um, a mandatory goal of 25% reduction in water conservation efforts. And in 2017 is when the drought officially ended, which is outside the time frame of our analysis since we end in 2015. So um, that's something I point out that when we end our analysis, the drought is still going on, but just recently it ended. Um, this is a map of the Sonoma County Water Agency service area, so as you can see it ranges all throughout Sonoma and Marin counties. And to give a little context about the demographics of the region, um, Sonoma and Marin counties had great population growth in the 90s, but recently that population growth has slowed in comparison to other counties in the Bay Area. Uh, Marin County has the highest median age and the highest uh, percentage of non-Hispanic white population in the Bay Area. And Sonoma County is the county where most movers to the Bay Area remain um, instead of moving to other counties within the region. Um, compared between the two, Marin County has a higher median household income and a higher percentage of owner-occupied housing. Um, and additionally, uh, Marin County receives more rainfall on average than Sonoma County, but otherwise they have similar temperature pattern and precipitation patterns. Um, they have hot, dry summers, cool, wet winters. Um, this graph shows the percentage change in water demand um, throughout our time frame of interest from 2006 to 2015. And so something that's interesting here is that you can see compared to 2006, 
each year the number of connections pretty much stayed more or less the same. However, um, water demand compared to the demand in 2006 changed um, pretty often or pretty significantly throughout our time frame. And so um, this is kind of the driving factor of seeing what caused this change in water demand despite this similar number of connections throughout our whole time frame. So moving on to the data, first we'll talk about demographic data. We um, specifically looked at the median household income, the percent educational attainment defined um, as those who have a bachelor's degree, uh, the percent Hispanic population, the percent owner-occupied housing, and the population density. <coughs> um, so we found this data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, Statistics and the American Community Survey. Uh, we specifically looked through SimpliMap to get this at the census tract level, and then we used GIS shapefiles provided by the district to find the averages of each of these demographics um, of, from the census tracts within each specific retailer district. Um, so first, here are three of our demographics. You can see on your far left the median household income. Um, you can see a pretty big difference between Sonoma and Marin County. So Marin County has a higher overall average of median household income. But within Sonoma County, the town of Windsor and the city of Petaluma comparatively have a higher income than the other districts within the region. Um, the percent educational attainment pretty closely mirrors the um, median household income. As you can see, it's on average higher in Marin County compared to Sonoma County. And something that's really interesting is that this last graph, the, this last graph, the um, percent Hispanic population, is pretty much the inverse of that. So you can see that as you go further north, there's a higher percentage of Hispanic population. Um, in the town of Windsor, it is about 30%, and in Marin Municipal, the one further south, it is about 15%. So as you can see, it's, a, um, it's almost double as you go further north. Um, that's, that's demographically interesting, but why is it significant for water demand, the share of Hispanic population? Yeah, um, that's something, unfortunately, due to data limitations, we didn't put in our regression. Um, but it's something that we keep in mind when we are making recommendations to the agency and the partnership to um, perhaps use targeted advertising um, considering uh, different populations, okay. which we'll talk about later. Well, and so multi multilingual targeting, you know, uh -huh. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, more, moreover, uh, these are all correlated with median household income. So if you have a high percent Hispanic population, you also have you know, generally lower median household income, which in turn has an effect on water demand. So it seems like this is the most important thing to include. Okay. Yeah. Um, so moving on, a couple other demographics. First, on your left, we have the percent owner-occupied housing. Um, so as you can see in Marin County, they comparatively have a higher percentage of owner-occupied housing compared to Sonoma counties. Um, something to point out is that you can see the smallest percentage of owner-occupied housing is in Katahdi and Warner Park because of the proximity of Sonoma State University. There is most likely a lot more renters in that area. Um, the other graph shows the population density, which is interesting because population density tells us about the lot sizes. So if a population or an area is more dense, that means that the lot sizes are smaller, which means that they might have smaller um, or less landscaping needs, um, less need for water in that area. Um, so as you can see, it varies pretty significantly throughout the region. So we have to climate. Yeah, so we can't have a, a good understanding of what water demand is going to look like during a period of drought without an understanding of what the climate uh, uh, looks like for the region. So we looked at precipitation data, taking daily values from eight, uh, and, or eight or nine different climate stations run by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, um, and average those over bi-monthly period to match our uh, water pricing data. Um, and as you can see, the overall the region exhibits very similar patterns throughout the whole study area um, with uh, uh, lots of rain during the winter and almost no rain during the summers. Um, there's somewhat of an anomaly for uh, Valley of the Moon and Sonoma, uh, uh, Sonoma City climate stations. Um, there, but through about 2010 and 2012, and I'm happy to talk through uh, what that what basically caused by missing data. I'm happy to answer questions about that later. Um, the, ways for, uh, the reasons for which we don't think it affect our regression. Um, we did the same thing for temperature data, looking at once again daily values from these same climate stations, average over a bi-monthly period, to show that really uh, across the whole study region, uh, the, the temperature patterns were roughly the same: uh, warm summers, cool winters. Um, and lastly, we took an index of the Palmer Drought, sorry, the Palmer Drought Severity Index, which is just a, uh, a, a metric for how uh, severe the drought is, with negative values indicating drier years. Um, anything below two is considered a fairly significant drought. 
um, and, and, and anything above zero would be wetter years. And this is just to show that the north coast, which is the Sonoma, uh, Marin uh, area, all the way up to Humboldt, um, experienced a drought similarly to the central coast, which is the rest of the Bay area, um, uh, down to, from uh, San Francisco down to about Monterey, a little bit further south. Awesome. So our essential kind of data that we needed to put together was the water demand data from the different retailers. So we received data from the nine different retailers that we wished to study in the Sonoma County Water Agency. And we wanted to find out what was the single family residential deliveries and connections data from 2006 to 2015. And we wanted to create one database for which we can compare these different retailers. However, when we received the data, the data was in many different forms from the different retailers. So first thing we had to do was standardize the data across all the different retailers. For example, some might have used acre feet to measure water demand. Some might use gallons, some use million gallons, some use CCF. So we decided to just standardize all of them into CCF. Next, some of the retailers, when they gave us the water demand info, only gave it in bi-monthly periods. For example, they might give a, one number for January and February, and because of that, we decided to standardize all nine of our retailers into bi-monthly periods. So for each retailer, we had 10 years. Then within each year, there's six bi-monthly periods. So there's up to 60 observations for each retailer for our water demand data. Next, we wanted to find how much the individual connections used on average for their water. So the way we did this is we took the average amount of water used in the bi-monthly period and then divided this number by the average number of connections during this five-monthly period in order to find out the average amount of water use in CCFs per each connection. And this was important for us because we wanted to see what was changes in the behaviors of individual connections um, by things as a drought and all the variables we want to talk about. So we wanted to get it at the connection level. Despite having most of our data, we were missing a little bit of data from three of our retailers, Petaluma, Battle of the Moon, and Katati. So we wish that we would have 60 observations for nine retailers. It would be 540, but we actually were missing five different years of data between these three. So our final observation number was 510, which we will discuss later. As you can see in this graph, it demonstrates the water demand yearly, with water demand and CCF per connection being on the left and being yearly going to the right, and it's all nine of the agencies. I think the interesting thing of note first is from 2006 to 2015, the overall trend line is down. From 2006, there was more water use, to 2015, there is less. But I think some interesting points further is this year is between 2010 and 2013. And this is kind of post the recession as we start getting back up, water demand actually starts rising again, even though the overall trend line is down. However, the part that we are really interested by is this point past 2013, 2015, where water demand was rising from 2010 to 2013, but then as you can see, you're moving to the right of the red line, water demand begins to fall again. And this is where we're really interested in finding out what are the reasons, what are the, the variables that can help explain this decrease in water demand as we were in the drought. One of the variables we, we wish to use um, is pricing data, and we received pricing data from five of the different retailers. And similarly, we wanted to find ways that we can standardize the pricing data so we can compare them from retailer to retailer. And the way that we wish to do this was find the average amount of um, average price paid per CCF used by a connection in a monthly period. Once we found how much they paid on average in a month, we then had to compile this into bi-monthly values to match our water demand data. So from January, February 2006 to November, December 2015, we had our bi-monthly values for how much an average connection would spend on the water per CCF. With this, unfortunately as well, we were missing data from four retailers, Petaluma, Valley Moon, Sonoma, and Katati, and we will discuss later how this, we worked this into our regression. The way that the pricing structures also worked very differently, and this will be discussed as well later, that pricing posed a difficulty for us. As you can see here, we had, from the five that we received data from, we had three different stru uh, pricing structure methods. So there is multi-tier pricing, hybrid pricing, and single tier. So for multi-tier, that basically the way that works is for your first set of quantity that you use of water, let's say zero to 10 CCS, you pay a certain price. But once you reach 11 to 20, you might pay a different price, so on, depending on how many tiers there are. So Windsor, for example, used four or five during this time period. They actually switched in 2010. Um, Marin has an asterisk because they do something interesting where in summer months you have a higher quantity of water that you can use in certain tiers than in winter months, which we thought was interesting. Santa Rosa is a hybrid in the sense that some single-family residences, most of them use multi-tier, depending, but it depends on how much water they see used. If you use below a certain amount, you're actually just 
charged at a single tier price. And finally, Groundhog Park was just single tier, but unfortunately, we only had pricing data from 2010 to 2015. So when we actually get into regression, we weren't able to use Groundhog Park for pricing. Another important variable is the partnership conservation budget. And as we discussed, the partnership was created in 2010. We believe that the creation of the partnership had an effect on water demand. So what we did is we compiled the partnership budget from 2010 to 2015. We both did this and we saw how much they spent each year, but we also were interested in the cumulative number, amount of money that the partnership has spent, which is over $35 million from 2010 to 2015. Um, and we think this cumulative total is interesting in trying to help our understanding because we think that education efforts or investments into water efficient appliances, such as toilets or washers, have big effects. Even though in a regression we weren't, we're not using the cumulative number, we do think it's helpful in understanding how it works. And this graph just demonstrates the cumulative amount of money that the partnership has spent from 2010 to 2015, where, again, it was over $35 million that has been spent over this time period. Um, so moving on to unemployment, unfortunately, it's not the same across all sectors, but so instead, we decided to use unemployment as our variable in our regression because we do because we do have it from 2006 to 2015. Uh, this graph here shows the difference between the unemployment level in Sonoma and Marin counties. And as you can see, during our entire time frame, Sonoma County always has had a higher unemployment rate compared to Marin County. Um, particularly in 2015, for example, Sonoma County had a 4.9 annual unemployment rate, whereas Marin County had a 3.6 unemployment rate. So that's Pretty significantly different between the two. Um, moving on to media, we wanted to um, measure the amount of um, public interest in the drought throughout our time frame. So the first thing that we used was the software package Articulate, which took eight different local, national, um, and uh, statewide news <coughs> sources and measured the number of articles that were related to the phrase California drought during our time period. And as you can see here, the media coverage is pretty low pretty low until we get to January of 2014, which is right when Governor Brown declared his second drought state of emergency. And from that, it created this large spike in media coverage, um, increasing to about 240 articles in one month um, of articles related to the California drought. Uh, we then looked at Google Trends, um, first to see the amount of searches that people were doing related to the phrase, or for the phrase California drought. And this scales from 1 to 100, and it's a percentage. And so at the 100, it's the maximum amount of searches relative to the rest of the time. Um, so as you can see, in January 2014, is uh, 100% when a lot of people were searching, um, searching on Google California Drought and learning more about it, which shows a heightened public interest and awareness of the drought. We also did Google Trends to search water conservation. And as you can see, people are searching about water conservation all throughout our um, time frame. But in April 2015 is when we have the largest spike here, and that um, corresponds exactly to when the state board um, implemented a 25% mandatory restriction in water use and an increase in water conservation efforts. And so we see that the public was interested in that and searching about water conservation. Um, and something to note, too, is that this is specifically in the San Francisco Bay Area where we searched this, and so it shows that the public was interested in water conservation, um, specifically in the Sonoma County Water Agency Service Region during our time frame of interest. So we decided to run, after collecting our data, ordinary least squares linear regression using a software data analysis software SCADA. And this linear regression allows us to interpret the relationship between explanatory variables of the type that we've shared, like John shared temperature, precipitation, uh, and an output variable, which is water use in our case. Why do agencies use regressions? Why would an agency care about a regression? Well, you can imagine that if an agency wanted to raise the price, um, it might want to see what effect that would have on water demand. Um, so you can look at the coefficient on price to see how price uh, changes with water demand. We decided to look at which variables that the experts included in, in water demand regressions. And fortunately, we found a review of uh, water demand modeling that listed the most popular variables that were used. Um, we see climate variables like temperature, precipitation, we didn't include wind speed, uh, evapotranspiration, which is a measure of soil moisture. Uh, you see price information like uh, water price, rate structure, and uh, details about uh, the the, the retailers themselves, 
What's the percent Hispanic population? What's uh, the housing size within a retailer? Uh, but we, we thought that we would only want to include these variables because we thought that median household income was uh, basically captured all this other information. And we thought we also excluded population growth and wind speed. Anyway, we came down to these variables for our analysis. And I think the big question here is, uh, should this general model of, of, uh, of water demand be the same in an extreme drought scenario like the one that California experienced? On the one hand, you can say, yes, uh, if there's an extreme drought, temperature will go up, precipitation will go down, uh, soil moisture changes, so this model is just fine, it captures the effect of a drought. On the other hand, you can say a drought like uh, is an extreme scenario where the governor is declaring a state of emergency and there's suddenly a bunch of public interest in reducing water consumption. So it seems like maybe this model doesn't quite capture everything. So the next question is, well, what sort of variable could be a proper barometer on public interest in the drought and political interest in the drought? And we came up with this variable called articles, which is basically volume of drought-related articles uh, that news media is publishing. Um, so we're not trying to say that more drought-related articles causes people to you know, reduce their water demand, but rather that articles is a barometer on the political situation with respect to the drought. So, for instance, what does articles do after uh, uh, the, the, the governor declares a drought state of emergency? Well, you see the article's value jumps up, um, as we saw in 2014. So we think that articles is a pretty good measure. Um, for our data, as Pat said, we collected data on nine retailers. We observed them 60 times each. This is six bi-monthly periods over 10 years to get a total of 540 observations, the, uh, which we didn't quite get 540 because of a couple missing data, but mostly 540. So each variable split up into spatial, temporal, uh, uh, yeah, each has a spatial component and a temporal component. Unfortunately, we didn't have 540 observations for each one of our variables, so we had to split uh, our regressions into three regression scenarios. Our first regression, we include all the variables for which we had 540 observations. In other words, uh, 10 years observing nine retailers. And we were able to include these variables, articles, unemployment rate, precipitation, temperature, controls. Missing is the budget variable, which starts in 2010, so when we add budget, our observation period shrinks but we still include all retailers. And then when we add income and price, our observation pool shrinks even more uh, to 2010 to 2015. Only four retailers we had income and price information for. So once we kind of added all our data and we figured out our methodology, we were really interested to see some of the results. And first I'd like to run through some of the qualitative analysis that we had. And basically with these, we were trying to see how does water demand kind of relate to many of these variables that we have, that we were using for the regression. So first one that is very important is median household income versus water demand. And as Laney mentioned, unfortunately, the median household income, we only had it back to 2010, so 2010 to 2015. But as you can see here, the blue demonstrates 2010 numbers for the nine retailers, the red demonstrates um, median household income in 2015 for the nine retailers as well. And I think the really interesting things of note for median household income is something that you see in our literature and it holds true in our county, in Sonoma County Water Agency as well, is that as income rises, it typically corresponds with a higher water demand, which makes sense. But I think something that's really interesting about this graph that we found interesting is from 2010 till 2015, all nine of the retailers had higher incomes. In 2015, they had a higher income than they had in 2010. But at the same time, from 2010 to 2015, Every single retailer, all nine of them, used less water. So as income went up for each of the retailers from 2010 to 2015, the dots actually all shifted down as well. They were using less water, which we thought was really interesting. And we wanted to see kind of what are these other variables that could affect um, as opposed to just being income. This is water demand versus percent Hispanic population. And I guess kind of to try addressing some of your questions from earlier as well. There is a bit of showing that you, as Hispanics go up, percent Hispanics go up, that water demand goes down, but it's not a huge um, indicator as you can see in this, but I think the biggest thing we were interested by with Hispanic population is that 
in many of our retailers, there are high percentages of Hispanic populations. For example, seven of our nine retailers had over 20% Hispanic populations, what we thought was important in, for our recommendations. Water demand versus population density in 2015, as Lainey mentioned, population density can be used as somewhat of a proxy for lot sizes. As population density rises, people oftentimes have smaller lots and vice versa. As there's a lower population density, lots get bigger, which might mean that people use more water because they might have more appliances that use water in their houses, as well as might have just larger lots that use more water in watering their lawns, etc. And as you can see here, as the population goes up, water demand clearly falls as well. Education level is another one that is very similar to household income, and as you'd expect, as average education, the average education level, which was percent bachelor uh, degree attainment, rises, water demand rises as well, which was something that we expected to see in our results. And I think this is one that we found most interesting and was, so this is the water demand versus unemployment rate. And this is from 2006 to 2015, which is one of the few data points we actually were able to get for an entire frame of interest, which is 2006 to 2015. And Sonoma County is on the left, and Marin County is on the right. And the thing that really interested us by this is if you look at Sonoma County on the left, yearly unemployment is in the blue, Sonoma County water demand is in the red, which is measured in water demand TCF per connection. And as yearly unemployment goes up from 2006 to 2010, water demand goes down, as you would expect. But then from 2010 to 2013, as this yearly unemployment um, goes down, water demand starts rising again, again, as we would expect. But the interesting point is that 2013 again, where yearly unemployment continues going down, but water demand goes down as well. And that's something that is seen as well in Marin County. And I think this demonstrates why in our regression we wanted to include things such as articles or conservation budget, because we believe that the traditional methods of modeling water demand, where you really focus on things like income, like unemployment, might not be the best proxy moving forward as a result of the drought. All right, so without further ado, our regression results. Regression number one, recall, we included all retailers over the full observation period from 2006 to 2015, and we included all variables for which we had that number of observations. This includes our articles variable, which I discussed, unemployment rate, precipitation temperature, PDSI, which is a measure of drought severity, and uh, even though we weren't able to get median household income data that stretched back that far, we decided to mark four retailers as being in the high income cluster group to try to see the effect of income even though we didn't have the specific data. And here are our coefficients with significant stars next to them. And we have variance inflation factor in parentheses. Variance inflation factor just measures collinearity between variables and uh, a value of below five is considered permissible as a rule of thumb. Uh, but the important thing here is the number of observations, the coefficients, and the significant stars. Here we see that all variables are significantly related to water demand, um, except for precipitation, which is more or less consistent with the literature. Um, and the coefficient on articles, we see uh, that as articles goes up by 10, water demand goes down by 1.3%. For regression two, we decided to add the budget variable, which reduced our observation window to 2010 to 2015. Here, we don't add the budget variable. And then when we add the budget variable, we see that it's insignificant and practically zero. Why is that? Well, each retailer gets a budget of around 1,000 that doesn't quite change over the years. And the purpose of regression is to see how changes in one variable produce changes in the outcome variable. And if the regression, if the budget isn't changing that much, it's really hard to see the effect of a change in budget on the outcome variable. Sorry, just a clarification. Budget is not this $35 million? Uh, yeah, but that was the cumulative budget spent across all nine retailers over uh, however many years. Um, oh, so you, didn't use it, you just use the annual budget for each? Uh -huh. okay, got it. And it's about, it like okay. hovers around a thousand. Um, and finally we add income and price, which as I said is an even smaller subset. Um, and we see that average price, when we add it, is insignificantly related to water demand, whereas income is significant in both models. 
Should I discuss computations with the price variable right now? Sure. <laughs> so the average price variable uh, is, is a little bit problematic because we use tiered pricing. So as you use more water, you're actually charged more water. You're actually charged more, which brings your average price up. Which means you're, you use more water, which caused your average price to go up. So that's simultaneous cause. That means that, means that uh, you know, water demand is actually changing the price. Uh, so that makes us think that maybe we, we shouldn't include this, or that maybe explains why it's insignificant. Um, and uh, yeah, I think. Were there periods when the tiered prices all rose? I mean, as the water, the intensity of the drought increased, then what you might pick up is you've got, you know, tiered prices, the more water you use, certainly the higher the price. But if you raise all those prices in response to drought, then you should actually see the, what we would expect, and that is that the price effect should be quite positive on causing water conservation. But if they kept the same prices, then it's the same argument as the budget. Nothing changed, so you're not going to observe anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. I and think that's going to be so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we're only looking at the consumer price, not what the water suppliers, what happened to their prices over the uh, period of the No, we're not. Excellent. Um, really quickly, in any regression analysis, we have the uh, possibility of omitted variable bias. Um, and so we just want to run through a few of the variables that we weren't able to include. Uh, significant ones include statewide spending on uh, water conservation efforts or uh, media coverage or public awareness, um, which naturally would uh, probably have had some more effects to uh, uh, Sonoma County spending. Um, and these were just limited by data availability and kind of the, the scope of our project. Um, so this is just to say that statewide spending, social media coverage, um, so Twitter accounts or um, Facebook uh, articles, uh, Facebook posts about uh, the drought that may have also influ influenced water demand in the area, um, as well as uh, more specific data on individual retailer, uh, retailer rebate programs, and so uh, data that was more specific to individual retailers. Um, and not uh, uh, aggregated into the larger conservation budget, all may have affected the specific numerical um, outcomes of our regression. So this is just to say that there are variables out there that probably led to um, our specific numbers either being overestimates or underestimates. Um, we have to talk about how we think each of these might have influenced those in particular, but for the purposes of our presentation to the Sonoma County Water Agency, we just want to say that uh, these, our regression results are talking about trends and correlations um, and associations rather than planning for specific dollar by dollar uh, changes in conservation budget, for example, changing uh, a specific uh, number by number uh, CCF per connection changes. Um, and so what were those trends? What, what are the recommendations we're making from those trends? First and foremost, we saw once again uh, that uh, media and public awareness, as captured by the number of articles written about the drought, had a statistically significant and fairly economically significant effect on water demand. You know, we're talking about 10 articles yielding a 1% change, you know, that scales up to 100 articles, and there are many hundreds of articles written about the drought, um, scales up to, you know, 10% change in water demand for uh, single-family residential units. 